Okay, hello everybody, thank you for coming in. My name is Razvan Pistola and I represent Digital Dryads. Okay, uh, Digital Dryad solves uh, a very hard problem, but we solve it using very advanced software. So, the problems that we are trying to solve are in the forestry industry. Last year, Digital Dryads won first place at the competition organized by the Publications Office of the European Union with our forest monitoring solution using multispectral satellite imagery. Today, during this event, we will launch a new advanced tool that will discourage theft and transportation of illegal wood. So again, thank you very much for participation and we will do our best to provide you with answers to your questions. You can ask questions in uh, Zoom, you can ask questions on YouTube, you can ask questions on Facebook. You just write them and my colleagues will collect them and when we are at that section of the conference, we will try to answer them to the best of our abilities. Um, all you have to do is have a minimum of patience, you have to have an openness to new ideas and a bit of respect for everyone that is involved in this conference. Uh, we have participants with vast experience in forestry and participants in totally different fields. Software, security, mapping, research, state institutions. Uh, we will explain any concept in detail and I promise you that you'll find this event very interesting. Okay. So, when we are talking about illegal logging, we are talking about two problems. The first is the actual cutting of the wood and the second is the transportation of the wood. So, in order to understand uh, uh, the solution that we are proposing, we have to understand the problem. The problem is this. Um, in uh, Romania, for example, you have the right to uh, buy a piece of, uh, um, sorry, you have the right to go into the wood and cut wood. Now, uh, this is what is called a live wood. So it's not wood already cut, it's wood alive. That means you have the right to go into that area of the forest and you are allowed to cut a number of trees. Uh, these trees have been previously marked, so they've been counted and marked and they have an estimated quantity of cubic meters. And this volume represents the maximum limit that you are, about, uh, that you are allowed to transport. After harvesting, the resulting volume is usually higher than the estimate, the initial estimates, and it should be declared and taxed. In practice, it is undeclared and it is then placed on the black market illegally. This isn't the only method to uh, trick the law. For example, we have a method that is called the addition method. So, whereas the wood had to have been previously marked, it is marked after the auction. Or by the method of thinning, whereas instead of cutting the dead wood that you are allowed to, you go into the forest and instead of cutting the dead wood, you cut uh, a live wood that is high quality. Or many other methods. For example, you can blame the wind for knocking down trees. You can blame bears and deer that have scratched the bark of the trees or trees that have broken tips. All of these have to be harvested. So, the theft of wood in Romania's forests, of European forests, of or worldwide forests, sounds a bit distant to you, a bit distant to you, I know. But think of it as a direct attack on your health, the health of uh, your children, our health, the health of our descendants. It is an attack to the right to breathe fresh air and to have a na natural, healthy environment, and it is an attack on the countries whose economy is being undermined. Now, if we just think about the negative effects of forest loss, those are serious, right? 
erosion, landslides, loss of biodiversity, loss of ecosystems, and finally climate change with unstoppable positive feedback loops. After we understand how uh, wood is cut illegally, we have to understand how it is transported illegally. So there are three main ways that it is being transported illegally. First of all is truck overloaded. In the permit, that, let's say you have uh, 20 cubic meters of wood, but you transport 40 cubic meters. That's one method. The second method, you do a multiple transports for one permit. For example, depending on your loading from point A and destination, unloading point B declared by you, let's say you have a validity of six hours in which you have to make one transport of 30 cubic meters, but because you are fast or because you wrongly declare the A and B point, you can make many more transports, three transports, let's say, of, three, of 30 cubic meters. And the last method is using a permit that is only partially completed and you fill it when the police finds you or you just go without the permit. You use isolated roads, you use it at, uh, at atypical intervals, strange hours of the day during holidays. And because only a small percentage, let's say in Romania you have 10,000 transports per day, and only a small percentage between 1 and 3% of transports are being checked, it means that if you are transporting wood illegally, it's a very profitable business for you. Now, the problem that we are addressing is this, illegal transportation, because you can verify the wood, at, uh, you can check the wood, at loading, during transportation, or at its destination. But the easiest way to uh, catch people doing illegal transports is on the public roads. So this is where our solution comes in. Transport monitoring. So if we look at this image over here, let's see what it can do. We have these tools that represents the fact that we can measure and count every, every single uh, wood log in your truck. We mark the exact time and we mark the exact position using GPS and we can also generate a unique fingerprint, a digital fingerprint of the wood transport. We'll go into detail in just a bit. Um, Now, the mobile application that we are presenting here can be used by the drivers, by the company, or by the competent authorities. It just reduces the time from hours. It takes probably two hours or four hours to check an entire uh, stack of wood to a couple of seconds. You just take your phone out, you do a picture, and boom, you have all the data that you need. So the analysis is done in real time. Now, for the unique fingerprint, I'll explain it in just a bit. Now, if you take these algorithms and you place them in public cameras, similar to the number plates cameras, and you give them to authorities, now you have a solution that defeats all the three main methods of evading illegal transportations. So, for example, let's say that we are thinking about um, overloading our truck. Well, you can't because when, the, when you load your truck and you want to go out of the forest, you have to take a picture. So, anyone is able to see that um, you have put more wood into the truck than you are allowed by the permit. So, we can defeat the first step. Let's say that you don't take a good enough picture like the law requires you in Romania and you just go onto the public roads. Then one of these publicly placed cameras or hidden placed cameras or uh, police or, or any sorts of authority can take a picture and see how much wood you have in your truck. Now, can you do uh, many more transportations on the same permit? No, because again, Using the um, uh, 
shape of the pieces, the positioning of each of the pieces, the texture, the color of the pieces, all of them together can be uh, um, put together into a unique fingerprint. So just like a human fingerprint, you can do a digital uh, fingerprint of the wood. So each wood transport is unique, it has a kind of digital signature and it is identifiable. That means you cannot use exactly one permit and do two or more uh, transports because we already have a unique digital fingerprint for your wood, wood transport. And again, if you are trying to go uh, without a permit, the first camera that catches you, it will send an alert, it will trigger warnings and somewhere down the road the police will come and stop you. The mounted video cameras can be either visible or they can be hidden uh, or they can just be gateways for trucks to go in and they will work automatically 24-7 and they will offer a real-time analysis. This entire system that we have created, so the mobile app, along with algorithms that can be placed on web cameras, means that we are now able to answer efficiently and effectively the questions of who, when, where, how much legal or illegal wood has transported. Okay, I think we'll skip this one and let's go into the demos. Okay, so this is a simple web application, so it's not complete, it is just a prototype showing what our algorithms can do. So all you have to do is click here, choose an image. I have made a selection of a couple of hard images and we'll discuss why they are hard. And I, when I press Analyze Trees, let me zoom in just a bit for you, it takes a couple of seconds and every, every single piece of wood is identified and an ellipse is drawn around it. Let's do it again. Again, I will zoom in. Some of you might be on mobile phones and do not see the green um, ellipses. Now, you might be saying, hey, Razvan, but this isn't a circle or an ellipse. True. And this is just to show you that we have detected it. Beneath the surface, if you scroll just a bit, you can see the actual polygons. So the precise polygons that the algorithms ha has deemed that are appropriate for this piece of wood. So we can see the polygon being nicely drawn, just like in a kid's coloring book, right? So let me, let me put you a couple of more images. So an actual truck loaded with wood. Looking at it, it has between 100 pieces of wood and you you as a human need to actually be an expert in saying how much metric cubes of wood are in this truck. But if you analyze it, in a couple of seconds, the algorithm will detect all of it. Well, hopefully most of it. It's still a prototype, right? So here are the 255 shades of uh, green polygons. And it, the wood can be in any kind of transportation, right? Look at these circles, they're almost perfect. Okay. Now, you might say, Razvan, but you, you only detect some circles. What's that all, all, all about, right? So what you do with these circles is simple. This is just a uh, short demo of uh, graphical user interface to see that uh, these circles are the first step in our solution. So let's take an image. 
load it. Give me a second. Okay. This is one of our first algorithms. Let me move my face away. And zoom in, Charles. It's very sensitive. So imagine that you have some sort of reference in your image. So you know that the point between this uh, tip and this tip, because it is a railroad transport, let's say it's 2.5 meters, 250 centimeters. If I press press uh, process, now it will detect all the circles. It's not perfect because it's one of the first algorithms that we developed, so it, it's really bad. But what you can do is you can select the circle, you can make it bigger or smaller, you, you can move it around, and you can delete it. You can select and delete it. And when you go here, let's say you know the length, you can, uh, you can find out the length multiple ways, but let's say I am telling you that the length is four meters, and now if you press generate stats, instantaneously you have the uh, number of uh, pieces, you have an approximate volume, and you have a digital fingerprint. Um, now, what this distribution is, it just counts how many uh, wood logs have, this is either centimeters or pixels, and they're the, the diameters. So, uh, there are many with the small diameters, fewer with uh, a bit bigger, and there are only a couple of uh, wood logs with 40 plus pixels in diameter or centimeters, depending on the algorithm. So if I select this one and delete it, and select this one and delete it, and I press generate stats, I expect this number to be zero, right? And again, the digital fingerprint has changed. So let's do a quick recap. We have a state-of-the-art algorithm, and we will talk about this demo a bit more, that can detect at polygon level each and every piece of wood and we have an interface that allows you to edit how the wood is so sometimes the algorithm can make a mistake and you should be able to come in and fix the mistakes right now what we have also developed is this application I it can be on the phone or it can be on a tablet I made a tablet because it's a bit bigger and I can show you better so it's really simple. You can either take a picture with your camera or you can select a picture from your gallery. I just went into Google and downloaded a couple of images. So if I select this image, now it sends the image to the algorithm. The algorithm processes it really fast, as you can see in a couple of seconds, and then it returns. Well, in this case, we didn't draw uh, ellipses, we just draw bounding boxes. It's easier to see in, in a mobile. So it just shows you that the algorithm can work on a web page, it can work in a mobile application, and it can work on a tablet. See, it made a mistake here. If I had uh, the GUI from this demo, I could just click on it and delete it. Okay, I'll just minimize this one. Now, going back to this algorithm, I have noted a couple of things that I want to show you. So, I show you that counting works. I can show you that it is precise and fast. I've shown you the polygons, the GUI. Okay, so th 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 this was a very nice surprise for me. Um, Yesterday, uh, I found out that it does something no other tool on the market does right now. It works on split wood. Let me show you what split wood means. 
So I think I found it on Google. Yeah, it was a random. So this is a really hard image, right? They're not circles. They're triangles and polyhedra and whatever. You press this button. It, it, it makes a mess, right? You don't know if it's actually working or not. Let's go look at the polygons. So besides this one that it missed, it got each and every one of these perfect, almost perfect. And remember, this is just our prototype. So it even works on split wood. It's that good. Well, look, look here. It, it, it even didn't know who, who to assign this little bit. And it said kind of like this little bit over here can be part of this piece of wood or it could be part of this piece of wood. Right? It's just like a, a, a human brain. It, it, you can trick it into, into falling for illusions. Okay, and formulas, I'll show them to you next time. And the wood print, well, I showed you, I showed you over here that we can generate it. It is unique. It is not a very good uh, fingerprint. It can be made better, but it just shows that it can be done. Okay. And one more. No, I'll talk about the volume calculation and then we can do a couple of short questions. So let's talk about volume calculation. In our images, I've shown you that you can take a picture of one of the ends. Usually it's the small end because some formulas use the small end and uh, compute the volume. The first thing that you have to know is that a tree is not a cylinder, the tree is not a cone, right? So the tree can be described in many ways. It has a parametric equation. You can use all sorts of coefficients or polynomials or uh, tables to describe its shape or its volume. I'm going to show you two of the more theoretical ones. So let's look at Huber formula. So what it says here is just look at the middle. Uh, this is uh, one of the radii. This is the other radii. Add them, divide them by two. So it's kind of like a, an average media, me, media radii. Um, to the power of two, right? Multiplied by the length, five meters, 0 0.02. Okay, and you get this total volume of 2.54 square uh, cubic meters, right? This is Huber. You can also have Smalian formula. And what this one does, it looks at both ends. It looks at this end, right? It does the, the kind of average radii here. It does a kind of average radii here, right? At the other end, it multiplies by the length it multiplies by a coefficient and then you get an approximation of the volume 2.58 it's not the same right because for smalian you use both ends for huber you use only one end so it's like a uh, what, what is it one percent difference between the two it can be bigger right okay so we are now going into the short questions and please feel free to ask whatever. I will allow you to ask them on Zoom. I will enable audio in just a second. So now everyone can unmute, unmute themselves and join in the conversation. So short questions about I have, what I have presented so far, please. Hello, Razvan. This is Bogdan. Hello, uh, Bogdan. Pretty cool uh, polygon you got there. I, I came in late to class and I didn't figure it out by myself. Is this uh, algo you developed? Is it something that is uh, open source or a standard implementation? Uh, can we play with it in any way? Or is it proprietary? I don't know the origin. <laughs> Uh, this algorithm is uh, developed by Digital Drives from scratch. It's proprietary. We own all the IP rights. 
but we will give you one to play in a couple of weeks. Awesome, okay. Uh, without breaking any sort of proprietary confidential sort of line, how could we in this call be able to help? Either by testing or by uh, maybe uh, comparing or benchmarking against some other approach. I mean, what would help you? Uh, I'm not sure what the objective of the proprietary algorithm is. I mean, it would help us to put it in a bit of a context uh, that would help us figure out how can we help either as testers or as developers or as mm -hmm. I don't know. So, Bogdan, uh, I will answer this question in just a bit when I'll talk about the business model and okay. our clients and okay. how can each and every one of you help. So if you don't mind, I'll answer this in a couple of minutes. Okay. okay. So are there any questions on the Facebook and YouTube streams that you would like me to answer? Uh, no, no, there are not uh, any questions on Facebook or YouTube, just on, uh, on Zoom. Okay. Um, there are some questions regarding the volume estimation, right? It's, um, and there's a question, if the picture is taken from more or less than 90 degrees, there will be errors. True. Right, so, um, and um, Bogdan was asking about the need to give a scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to answer, uh, just to clarify, I can, I can uh, tell you that uh, um, from what I've seen, it involves human interaction, correct? It depends. On the mobile, yes. Okay, On the please. deployed system, it will not require human intervention. And uh, uh, the deployed system does not calculate the, the volume? It calculates the volume. Without giving us giving a scale? without giving you a scale. That is something that uh, we are not presenting here, but we have a technical solution that uh, takes away the need to do a manual scale input. Okay. Please so we do have if this. You can develop on this part, because this is the, the, the important part from my point of view of the algorithm. Uh, if I may, can you tell us a bit about why is this the important part for you? Because I consider that uh, systems that are human dependable Yes. Open to mistakes. Okay. Yeah. An operator is tired to one day and to upset true, true. another day. Yes, yes, yes. To, you understand that. Yeah. Yes. So to answer your question, um, is the deployed system fully automatic? Yes. How? When you install the system, we will take you through uh, calibration steps. In those calibration steps, we will have the exact mapping between real world and pixel world. So no scale will be involved. However, when you have a mobile device and you take it with you out of the pocket in the forest, right? And you see a pile of wood and you take a picture, you have again, a semi-automated method where you put a scale on the ground, right? That can be detected. Both ends can be detected. Let's say you have a reference of one meter or two meters or three meters, right? Or you have to put it manually, right? I so, understand. I understand. It's okay. okay. Thank you, Bogdan, for your question. So any more questions about what I have presented so far? Do you have questions right. about counting, polygons, the GUI, the Android apps? Uh, hello, my name is Julian Yuga. Hello, Julian. I have you a question. You told us about the fingerprinting. Yes. Okay. Uh, have you tested the fingerprint between two different cameras on the same truck on different time of the day? So, and what was the rate of success? Okay, so we have not done extensive tests for the fingerprinting because fingerprinting is secondary if you have enough cameras, right? Or if the system is used enough. Now, going back to the fingerprinting, the algorithms that we are developing, they are 
uh, agnostic to, so it means it doesn't matter if you have different lighting, you have different uh, distances, right? You can be closer or further away, up to a point, right? And again, the fingerprinting can be thought of a unique fingerprint. So each transportation is given a unique fingerprint and uh, you can identify it between hundreds and thousands of transportations because I said you have 10,000 a day in a, in a country like Romania, all right? Or you can think about it as a similarity metric. What does similarity metric mean? It means I have, made a, I have made a fingerprint of the digital transport. Now, how similar it is to every other transport out there? It is the same facial recognition software works. It doesn't tell you a, 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 unique, um, an, a, a unique fingerprint for your face. It does in a way, but those parameters behind the scenes can be used to measure the distance between your face and every, everyone else's face uh, without, uh, without caring the, the amount of light or how, how much the face were, was turned left and right up to some point, right? like 15 degrees this way and 15 degrees that way. I think Bogdan knows a bit more about how many degrees you can turn your head sideways be before the fingerprint gets corrupted, right? Uh, does that answer your question? Yes, okay, okay. I was, I was just wondering what was the rate of success, but as you haven't tested yet, so my question is not uh, very important in that moment, and thank you. So we have tested with um, synthetic data and for synthetic data is very good. No, 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 I, I understand what you mean. I know that when you are stepping out from your office, things are uh, totally different. That was my question. And I just wondering if you manage to do that in real life. Sorry. That was I, uh... Uh, regarding the modus operandi of the process for acquisition and tagging or selection, uh, my question is, is the expectation is that the person taking the picture will also do the correction or the tagging or is it the assumption in the process that they are two different persons? So, we are, we are not offering a tagging solution. We are offering an end-to-end -end product, right? So what happens is you take the picture and everything just works. What happens behind the scenes is if there are errors, the algorithms will improve over time, right? We are Is using machine error? learning algorithms. Need to go and ask, uh, hey, Mr. Logman, person expert in woods, mm -hmm. uh, this is the picture that are inconsistent. Please make a decision or tell me to write in journal what additional picture you need, Mr. Expert in woods, sir. That yes. is what the AI should uh, do automatically upon detecting an inconsistency between subjective opinions between any two algorithms employed in your ensemble. The question True. is how fast you close the loop from known uncertainty until elicitation to user. I found uncertainty. How often is this available for inspection? I mean, this is more a uh, process uh, question, not a technical question. Okay, because so to answer your question, a simple process would be take the picture. If the algorithm okay. says it's okay, you it can be added to the database and sent to the authorities. If but the algorithm again, says the, the picture question? is not okay, you have to take the picture again. Can, can the algorithm have any questions? Can the algorithms have any other uh, inputs then is okay is not okay can the algorithm say it is okay but i want you to tag uh, where the um, uh, first word is or to confirm that my tags are correct and it do does the user have the opportunity to give the algorithm anything more than one bit of information for now uh, it's out of scope okay but is there a process that is guiding these decisions? I mean, is there a client who says, look, I want these steps, or is this more like a prototype and, and uh, we're trying to explore what would work best for... The, the process, process is being compliant with EU regulations and best practices in the industry. Yeah, and also because we are introducing a new kind of tools, 
sometimes uh, there is no good known answer for this question so uh, like you said it, it is part exploring however the parts that are uh, set in stone are because they actually solve the real problems right so when you have overloading a truck or doing multiple transports per permit those are big problems or going out of the woods without a permit right and okay. you are talking about very uh, refined um, uh, data acquisition methods. Uh, I'm sorry, but at this point they're out of scope. Okay, okay, sure. I understand. Any other questions? That's fine. There are some questions on Facebook from uh, Laura Boyoli. Okay. Um, what are the constraints of image quality resolution? Okay, glad you asked. So. Uh, they're really big. Let me. Sh uh, I mean, you can use really big images or really small images, right? So the the images that I have tested over here, they're like 8K images, but it also works with images that are 200 pixels per 200 pixels, right? So, for example, the image over here has uh details it's 5000 pixels by 3000 pixels and if you want you can send me a 200 by 200 image and i'll show you that it still works just the same any other questions and um, which is the diameter that the application considers when the shape is very irregular how did it choose the diameter for now, it, it just I just told it draw draw an ellipse, and I don't really care. In the future, however, the um, center of the ellipse will be at the center mass of the polygon, and the area of the ellipse it will be uh, equal to the area of the polygon. Right now, it just draws draws something to know that it has detected something, but what happens? The actual polygons are used behind the scenes. Can I ask uh, something else? Yes. Um, okay, the presentation is uh, from the title. I've seen that it's a solution that can be scaled at, uh, for example, national level. Yeah. Yes. In our country, for example. Um, and it's uh, okay, this is the picture. Yes. Um, have you made some estimations how, how you? you create a coverage enough to to for example to supervise the, the transportation at the country level yes so. we we actually have made these calculations they're they're one of the first first things we did like back on the end of the envelope calculations and um, i don't want to go into numbers right now but if you want you can research how much money um uh, so the uh, Romanian National Forest Protection uh, spends what it's its budget for uh, seven, 17,000 people is per year and you will see that this kind of system that catches even 1% however the amount of illegal transported wood is it's way higher even a 1% people that are stealing makes this system feasible why? Because you can actually pay for the systems with the money from uh, fines uh, given to wood thieves. So is the purpose of this uh, project to uh, have it or its output be used by a public authority? Definitely. Or authority from yes. the public center? Yes. So it has to be. So it has to be fully transparent. Even if we give it to authorities. But have you talked with them? Have uh, you talked with them? Because I have talked with them about this sort of. Okay, uh, and what was the answer? I understand. I ascertained from your uh, question that you have not talked to them. I have talked with them. And they say what? Show us a demo, and maybe we'll use it. But they don't take any commitment, right? True. However, and this is not a productive line of reasoning right now. I, I don't want to. 
I don't want to be uh, negative, but I want to put this on the table. I delivered projects, and I know you also have delivered projects with the public sector. And the uh, the bottleneck is that after you deliver them, even if they even if they pay you, right, they don't use it, or they use it for three days or for two weeks to sign the acceptance papers and then there is no protocol there is no enforcement there is no operational oversight over how that thing is used because the thing is that you need political buy-in in order to make people use this in true, the sector, true. Hold on. sorry sorry to cut you off over there uh, let's have this discussion at, an, at another conference this is more more about <laughs> Uh, the practical stuff and uh, you want yes. to go into politics yes, and so I don't want to go there. Stuff, I would uh, like to understand practically what is concretely the purpose of this. As you said, you have not been from the beginning, so I do not want to repeat what I have said, the problem and the solution. Yes, but what is the purpose? The purpose is to stop illegal logging in Romania and other countries that are suffering. I understand. Okay. okay, let's go forward. So, let's do a side-by-side -side analysis at how we compare against the best in the line uh, wood measuring tools. So, the one on the left is our tool, the one on the right is our competitor and we have done a thorough analysis and uh, they, they are our best competitor the best on the market. Um, now, this is what we presented a couple of weeks ago. It did some mistakes, for example, it multiple, multiply registers the same piece of wood or it uh, overly exaggerates others. However, uh, compared with uh, underestimating the volume over here, it does good, right? No problems there. Now, why am I showing you this? I want you to understand how hard the problem of um, recognizing uh, faces, wood faces is, right? Why? Because some of them can be hidden, like this one, right? See, both of them detect. So both of them get high, high, high number of points for detecting hidden ones. For example, even this one, right? It missed this one, even though it seems easy, but our algorithm did not. So this is one of the first problems. When they are overlapping, you start to miss some of them. When they are in the shadows, you start to miss some of them. Now what they are doing good and we are doing good is, even if they have dirt on them, right? This one, for example, it still gets detected. So that's bonus points for both of them. Since then, we have upgraded our algorithm, so as you can see, now it even detects this piece of broken wood, which it previously did not, and it only detects this one one time. So our algorithm in a couple of weeks has just learned to become better, and this will happen in practice as well. The more data you feed it, the better it will get. And my personal motto is, if the human eye can see it, so you can train the computer to see it. Okay, so I'm looking at this picture and not, I'm not seeing any kind of errors, but let's look at the polygons. So the polygons are, aren't exactly perfect. For the star, starry one, right, it, it, it went a little overboard here and there. And again for this one, I mean, because it's such a broken tree. I wouldn't actually count it, but it is good. Now, uh, let's actually look at the demo so I can show you it's not made up. Choose file. I think it was, yeah, it was this one. Analyze trees. It was this piece over here. Right, and if you want to look at the polygons, again, they're very clean polygons. Here, it did go a bit overboard because 
it didn't recognize it as part of the bark and it did the same problem over here. But again, this pile of wood just has so many uh, woods in all directions. Okay, let's go forward. So, we have talked about some of the use cases for this kind of tool, but we can talk about many more other use cases. And I'll move my head over here. So we have talked about that you can count, measure and digital wood print uh, at loading time during transportation. You can make monitoring, alerting and trigger warnings in real time using the um, cameras. And you can actually do a behavior uh, uh, analysis of how people are trying to bypass the laws, right? So some of the questions said, okay, how, how do you know where to put them, right? You start to put them where you think it's good, but over time where when you see people using some roads more than others, you can start planting the cameras where they need to be. And you can direct authorities to start stopping trucks in areas where you know more problems are are uh, are happening okay now you can also use these algorithms at unloading you can do inventory at your deposit or inventory at your processing factory again you just take your uh, phone you do a uh, a picture and then you you get everything that you need in your database, right? It's precise and it is fast. And one of the better use cases, you can use this as protection when, uh, when you are trying to protect close areas like public or private forest, may they be in the mountains or in the plains, it, it is easy to put a couple of cameras and to see how many people are, are entering and exiting with trucks and what is the volume of wood. And you can cross check that with the legal permits. Now, about the volumetric measurement of wood, it depends on the country, right? So you have countries uh, that have adopted the Hubber, some countries adopted Smalian, some countries developed their own formulas. I'm missing a couple, I don't have the Japanese just. So, uh, some countries are measuring the volume over bark, like Finland, Ireland and UK. And you can see that depending on the formula that you pick for your country, and each of the countries has its own reasons for picking these formulas, you get a different uh, uh, end volume, even though the starting volume is the same. Now, the reason behind this has to do with selling, buying and processing wood, how much is lost during processing, during drying and so forth. The details do not matter. What matters is that we will have all of these formulas inside our application. So, if you are in France, you use your France formula. If you are in Russia, you use the ghost formula. And uh, the main point and the main takeaway is, it's not just a number, right? You take a picture and you get a number. It's not just a number. You take a picture and given a formula, you have a number, right? So formula and number go hand in hand. You cannot say I have 0 0.25 cubic meters I have to say I have 0 0.25 cubic meters using the Alberta Canada formula. That is all. And we will support all of them. Now, as you can see, there is uh, some difference on the right hand side. You can see between uh, minus 18% and plus 14% difference. Right? So you need to be aware of differences that are created just by using a different formula. And now let's talk about the team. Uh, I'm very proud about this team. Um, what I can say about this team is that they are dedicated, they are super strong, technology at the core, technological team, 
eight years of experience in DevOps, in computer vision, in data science, in machine learning, in deep learning. It is a team that delivers. Uh, we have developed complex state-of-the-art software project with the auto industry, for example, Volkswagen, and the banking industry, for example, BRD and Societe Generale, telecom industry, and many others. And we do have first-hand knowledge of the illegal wood harvesting scale thanks to our advanced deforestation monitoring software using the satellite images. So this project was awarded first prize at EU Data Fund 2020 and it was organized by the Publications Office of the European Union. These are some of our clients and partners. Some of them have actually given us hardware or software or cloud credits in order for us to better use their state-of-the-art servers to do our research and development. Now, talking about the business plan, some of the questions were about these. So, the, the business plan has to be very simple. On one side, you have a free tier with a price per measurement and a monthly subscription. You can choose either. The clients here, let's talk about the clients. So, um, agriculture and forest ministries of EU countries are our, our clients. Ministries of EU countries are our clients clients, environmental agencies, NGOs, public, private and corporate forest stewards, uh, what we call in Romanian ocoale silvice, publice și private, pot fi clienții noștri. Authorities, as I said, this system will pay for itself. Um, timber transporters, processors and fractories, they can all use our advanced algorithms in different use cases that we have previously presented. And uh, that is all, simple. Digital Drives is the best crops and forest monitoring prediction and analysis digital transformation toolkit for your EU country. People have asked how can they help us protect the forest. So you can start by subscribing, follow and talking to us, sharing invites, encouraging companies to work with us. If you're a Romanian, you can actually uh, redirect 3.5% from your taxes to us instead of the state and you can donate and sponsor us and obviously use our software. So digital rights is the solution. Now I will open the microphones again and we can have open talks about what you want out of this kind of tool, what you like about this tool and how you can improve or use this tool.